Good morning, Quad Copter 101 here on a breezy morning. Uh, first, before we get started, let me get my shout out of the way. Today's shout out goes to Cumulo Nimbus. Congratulations, Cumulo Nimbus. You were the first to say first in one of my recent videos, and this wins a shout out. So, what do I got here? This is the long awaited uh, Bugs 3 Pro GPS model. And yeah, we got a lot of wind here today. We're going to see how well this GPS works on a windy day because I know a lot of you folks out there don't have uh, perfect weather like I normally have out here in the desert. You get windy days, and we're, we're going to see how this actually works on a windy day. Um, what is special about the Bugs 3 Pro? It is supposedly an update to the old Bugs 3. This is the original Bugs 3 on the left, the red version of it. But if we look at it, uh, you notice there's a quite a bit of cosmetic changes between these two. Uh, the original Bugs 3 has a has smaller motors. The new Bugs 3 Pro has lar much larger motors, actually. Um, I got their size here written down. Hold on, I'll give you what they are. But they are 2204 1500 kV motors. Much larger diameter than the uh, Bugs 3. What else? We have GPS now. Um, this is a GPS bird now, uh, so you can, it can automatically hover and automatically return to you. And if you purchase the optional um, C6000 or C5000 cameras, it comes with a uh, Wi-Fi or 5G Wi-Fi connection that enables you to use the advanced features of the Bugs Go app, such as Follow Me, Circle Me, and Waypoints. You need this camera to do that. So if you, you purchase the basic model without the C6000 camera, all you got is a GPS bird. <laughs> but a GPS bird that can carry a GoPro, if you want. You get this mount, and you'll be able to carry your GoPro or GoPro clones, uh, but you won't have the advan uh, advanced features of Follow Me, or Circle Me, and Waypoints, uh, along with FPV. <laughs> this camera provides FPV through the Bugs Go app also. But uh, that is about it. Let's go over the controller. This is the controller. Again, uh, using the controller alone, you have the uh, basic features of the GPS position hold, which you turn on and off by this button here. On is to the right and off is to the left. So I want to fly in a GPS position hold, so I'm going to have that turned on. Uh, this is headless mode. You can turn it on by it's moving it to the right, but I don't like to fly with headless mode, so we're going to keep that off. Other features on the controller, this is automatic takeoff, automatic landing. Once the motors are started, you press that button and do an automatic takeoff. This starts and stops the motors. A quick press of this button stop, starts the motors. A long press stops the motors, puts the, you know, takes them out of idle um, after landing. You can do an automatic return to home by pressing this button here. The bird will also return to home on low battery or if it loses uh, uh, signal from the controller will automatically return to home. This button here is for your uh, photos and videos. A long press will activate or the camera for video. It will start the video taking. And a short press will take a photo. And down here on the bottom screen, we have telemetry of height and distance from the uh, the controller from the takeoff point, actually, along with the number of satellites being received and also uh, the transfer the receivers drone would be the receiver uh, battery. Uh, buttons on the back are fake. They're, they're non-operative, so they, this does not have flip. And finally, these antennas, as with all the other Bugs 3s or the Bugs controllers, are fake. They're not real antennas, so I can put them down like that. Okay, so let's fire this up, and I'm going to start up the Bugs Go app, and we're going to first see how well this hovers. In, on a windy day, and then if it's still flying well, we're going to go out and about with uh, the, uh, actually I want to demonstrate, follow me first, circle me, and then we'll go out and about and see how it performs uh, in terms of range of uh, FPV perception. So let's go for a flight and see how it performs. So enjoy this flight. Okay, before we start it up, I wanted to show something that's important. The new Bugs 3 Pro has a proprietary battery. This is the original Bugs 3 battery. This is the new uh, proprietary battery for it with a proprietary connector. And you got a proprietary connection that you got to use for the uh, charger on this. So, but it's still a 7.4 volt, 2800 milliamp per hour battery in the original. It's also 7.4 volt, 2800 milliamp per hour battery. Um, I just wish that they had stuck with this original design for this 
drone. Because right now you can't use the old Bugs 3, plentiful Bugs 3 batteries with this because look there, we don't have no XT30 connector anymore on this to power it up. So, okay, to fire this up, actually I'm going to use this battery as a weight here on my landing pad so it don't blow away today. But to power it up, you push in the battery and that turns it on. And at the same time, or soon afterward, we should turn on the transmitter and it will automatically bind. If it does not bind to the drone, hold down this red button while simultaneously turning on the transmitter. Okay, we're bound now. And that puts this in bind mode. Okay, what we need to do next is calibrate the compass. We got this blinking yellow lights here. You can barely see it there. But we want to turn these until those blinking ye yellow, turn this horizontally like so until those yellow lights turn to green. And I think, yeah, I'm in green right now. Just switch to green. And when they're green blinking lights, put it upside down like so. Let me show you those blinking lights so you can see them here. <laughs> but we rotate it vertically, nose down, until the blink blinking lights turn solid. And right now I got solid green lights on the back and solid red lights on the front. Compass calibration is completed. You need to do that with all GPS quadcopters, by the way, folks. Okay. Now I'm going to start up uh, or connect the app to the drone. It uses 5G Wi-Fi, unfortunately. So make sure that your phone is indeed capable of 5G Wi-Fi. I'll say that again. Make sure your phone is capable of 5G Wi-Fi before considering purchasing this in case you want to use the Bugs Go app. If it's not, you will not be able to use the Bugs Go app. And with that in mind, you will not be able to use the advanced features of Circle Me or Follow Me. You'll still fly. You'll still be able to put a, a GoPro in there with a GoPro. But you won't have those advanced features. Okay, this is the Bugs Go app. And as you can see, we have uh, FPV reception from the camera. By the way, that C6000 camera is a 1080p HD camera from HD. So keep that in mind. It's not too shabby. But I want to switch from... Actually, I want to start the video camera. And to do such, I'm putting down this right uh, camera button on the controller. And it should say TF00. So it's starting to record. And it's recording to a micro SD card uh, in the uh, quadcopter itself. Now for takeoff, all I need, should need to do first is start up the motors by pressing... Actually, making sure we have 16 satellites. So we have sufficient satellites. 7, I believe. Pressing these buttons should start up the motors, and then pressing the automatic takeoff button. Step it back because it's windy. See how windy it is? <laughs> but it is holding position in that wind. Holding position rather well, considering the wind. <laughs> Look at that tail. <laughs> uh, with the wind increasing, it's going up because it's using a barometer parametric uh, position hold or uh, altitude hold so I am going to bring it back down a, a bit and I want to get up close to it bringing it back down from all that wind come up to it and say I got my shirt today folks <laughs> San Diego today <laughs> okay I'm looking we have about two seconds or one and a half seconds of lag from this so don't expect to be able to fly FPV with this camera. This camera is primarily I guess to be able to um, point the quadcopter in the direction you want it to fly or take a video of. Now let's try out uh, these advanced features of follow me. Start to follow me. Yes. Okay. I got follow me activated here on this windy day. And it's doing such. Let's take a walk. I'll pick up a little speed here. Watch the old man run. <laughs> it's following me. It's doing a good job. Actually. Okay, let's go up a little bit higher. Actually go up quite a bit higher. Right about there. And now we'll hit circle me. Don't have your status or GPS is weak. Let me, let me turn off there and follow me. And I want to get in front of the picture here. We're going to hit circle me and hit yes. And there it goes. We're in a circle position on a windy day. 
Yeah, a lot of people fly in, you know, a lot of time I got good weather out here. Today I don't. Today I have quite a bit of breeze, quite a bit of wind. Yet, you know, being this, this is a GPS quadcopter, it don't really care other than you'll see it tilt a bit. It might also uh, suck the battery a little bit more because of uh, flying on the, in the wind. But uh, we're going to call it quits for the Circle B, so we'll stop that right there. Next is uh, waypoints. Let's try the waypoints. Uh, i got to go to that. Well, maybe not. <laughs> I'm pressing the... That wind is bringing it down backwards. Okay, there we go. That wind is really picking up, and as it picks up, this quadcopter's been descending a bit. So I'm going to go up a bit higher, because what I want to do next is waypoint flying. Let's zoom in. And then hit the waypoint, and the device is not yet connected. Okay, there we go. Then I'm going to hit draw. Then I'm going to do a circle around me. And then I'm going to hit submit. And then hit yes. Now it's flying waypoints. I told it to fly a circle. I don't know how big that circle is, but it's going on. And we're going to hit stop. Because those waypoints seem to be far away. And from there, from that position way over there, let's hit return to home now and try that return to home. Pressing the return to home button. And let's go back over and see how close it is. I'm probably going to abort the landing because of the wind, you know, the actual landing itself. But I want to see how close the return to home is on this. Comes. There it is up in the sky. It'll be starting its descent here shortly. And how close are we? I'm going to stop at the descent if I can with the throttle just before it touches down because I want to continue flying. That's pretty darn, well, about a meter now. That wind's blowing it away. I can't stop the descent. It's continuing. Huh. Well, it landed itself. It can take off again. Okay. So we're off about, uh, about a meter, a little less than a meter. We'll go back to the, this view here. We're going to stop the camera. Stop the recording we've got. Put the quadcopter back on its takeoff pad. And this time, let's go over to the... Uh, starting the video again. Let's go over to the railroad cars and see if we can make it over there with FPV. Okay, starting the motors. And hitting the automatic takeoff button. we can use the wind as to bring us back but let's see how far we can go can we make it over to the uh, train train cars over there from the Trona train the Trona train is an or it, it carries salt down to Los Angeles for shipment and processing I guess shipment actually <laughs> it's processed here in Trona I'm pretty sure that salt but uh, how far are we are? We lost connection, 132 meters there. Let's see if we can get regain connection. I put it in hover, we're 161 meters out. Let's see if we can go a little further toward the train, pushing forward. And I wanna go higher so I can see it. I'm trying to keep the uh, drone above the, uh, the mountains in the distance there so I can see it. I'm putting my glasses on too to help. <laughs> and uh, going a little further, oh, disconnected. It's 
lost signal from the, I'm pretty sure it lost signal from my phone, but is it doing a return to home? No, it's not. So I can push forward again. Going forward. Now, you can fly this drone supposedly without FPV and take it all the way out to uh, how far? I think it's close to a kilometer using this transmitter. But you're not going to get a kilometer of FPV using Wi Fi. Okay, right now I'm at 216 meters away, going up a little higher. And push it forward again. We'll make it to 300 meters. You're, you're going to get about 200 to 300 meters usually with these Wi Fi's I found. But today I'm getting pretty darn good Wi Fi. 250 meters away. 260, going up higher, keep it above the clock or the mountains. 290, 300 meters. I'm going to plop it there. Does it stay connected at 300 meters? Well, yeah, it kind of does. Okay, I'm going to turn it to the left. Turn it to the left a bit more. And we're going to push forward again. And I'm going to try to go up this line of trains here. I'm trying to keep eye of the drone, too. I see it. little white dot off in the distance there. Ooh, gotta go higher to keep it above the mountains. Maybe I can see it better at, if I keep it at the height of the mountains. Okay, I'm gonna plop it right there, going up a bit higher so I can keep sight of it. And how far are we at now? 350 meters. This is pretty darn impressive. <laughs> Pushing forward again. Turn to the left a bit more. That tilt that you're seeing is caused by the uh, wind hitting that drone. But how far am I now? I still got FPV, but 363 meters. I'm having a hard time seeing it now. <laughs> okay, maybe I should go up a bit higher. Let's see if I can see it. I'm losing sight of it there at that distance there. Uh, I'm going to fly at FPV for a bit, and then I'm going to do an automatic return to home. So push it forward again. Let's see what type of range is, this, is possible with this thing. Turn it to the left a bit. 390 meters. 400 meters. Something's beeping. That's my warning. It's getting low on, uh, it's halfway battery power. It's at a halfway battery point. Push it forward again. Okay, 400, it's coming back. It's because I'm, I'm farther than 100 meters. <laughs> farther than 15 meters out, this thing automatically returns even if it's at 50% battery power. Um, this is an automatic return due to low battery. Although we got more flight time, it doesn't let you go out far after you hit this 50% uh, battery power level. Okay, I see it. Here it comes. Boy, it's coming back fast in that wind. I don't know if you can see it up here, folks. There it is. Directly overhead. Got itself back due to low battery. Although it's only halfway low. Okay, I still got another. Uh, I can fly it close in for another. We'll just keep flying it until it forces itself to land. We'll go back to follow me and circle me again. Can I stop the return to home if I press the return to home button? No. No way to abort the return to home. That's a shame. I... But even on this windy day, it, I was, I'm worried about it flipping over. It doesn't, it doesn't seem to do that. I'm holding the throttle button down. On a return to home, this, this landing takes forever, so let's see if I can go out. Down and out, down and in. Down and in, shut it off. <laughs> okay, again, this thing starts beeping on low battery. Let me turn off that video for that. We're going to take off one more time. This time, again, we're going to be doing uh, follow me while it's doing the annoying battery beep. So, starting with the camera one more time. Okay, recording, let me double check, it is. Starting motors. 
and automatic takeoff. Okay, again, we got about, uh, I don't know, we'll find out how much more battery power we got left. But I'm going to activate Follow Me again. Uh oh, it's landing itself. That means it doesn't like its battery power is too low because it's landing itself. So that's it. Even though it says we got 50% more battery power, I'm going to stop that. It doesn't want to go anymore. It wants to land. So that's about it. So let me check my. It's still showing two battery both on the controller and it up here, but it doesn't want to fly anymore. So let me stop the video. Let me stop. And uh, let me stop uh, the Bobazin too. Okay, Mobbas three, two, one. Okay, Mobbazin is stopped. I'm gonna turn off the, the drone first by turn unplugging the battery. Uh, you gotta press this button down here to be able to release the battery. And then turning off receiver. So what do I think? Uh, yeah, it's a nice Jeep here. That battery just came out. It's a nice GPS drone. Um, it had pretty darn good distance. Pretty, pretty darn good FPV distance. I was on about 400 meters, going even further, and then I lost sight of it. I'm, I don't feel comfortable flying. Flying a drone if, when I lose sight with it. So I started to worry about it. Um, the camera's 1080p camera. That's cool. The FPV is good. Um, the only thing I really don't like about it, I wish they would have reconsidered what's the proprietary battery that we could be able to use the original. Bugstreet battery would have been great, but you get what you get. So, <laughs> again, this is the Bucks 3 Pro GPS drone. Hope you enjoyed this flight. Quadcopter 101, signing out. <laughs>